Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I am going to be making some rotisserie chicken on my wood stove with a nice wild rice stuffing. But before we get underway with that, I would like to say thank you to my channel members. The Needy Homesteader, Grampy Lobster, Mr. Smith's Kitchen, SW Heatley 27, Ron Thompson, Loretta Comer, Billy Lee Lawhon, Karen Neal, Richard from Canada, Mel Good, Me and You Acres, Rachel Tremblay, Beagle Mama, Greg Boone, Morwenna Theaker, Linda Jasper, Linda Neff, Fred Revels, and Judy James. Today, in your honor, I will be drinking some Red Bush, nice Irish whiskey. Here's to you guys, and your support is greatly appreciated. Ah, gotta love them Irish. Anyway, I'm going to start off by making my wild rice stuffing. Wild rice is a little bit different than regular white rice. It takes a bit longer to cook, and you need a little bit more liquid. Normally you would use two cups of water for every one cup of rice, but I'm going to use about two and three quarters cup of liquid to make up for the extra and I'm also going to add some dehydrated mushrooms so they'll absorb a bit of water on their own. I have some chicken bouillon here, like I said, two and three quarters cups worth. Brought that to a boil and now I'm going to add my wild rice. One cup of wild rice. in there. I'm going to add dehydrated mushrooms again. Hard to say how many. This is kind of an eyeball recipe. But I'm going to give her a goodish amount. Some of them big ones don't want to come out. Uh, a few more. And I'm also going to add slivered almonds. These are really good in the uh, stuffing. A goodish handful of them, oh maybe a quarter cup or so. Uh, a little bit more. Get my hot pad. And we'll get this back over the hotter part of the stove and bring this back up to a boil. And once that gets back up to a boil, I will cover it, move it over to a cooler part of the stove and let it just simmer slowly. It takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Kind of depends on how things go. But we're not quite boiling yet, just about. Grab my lid so it'll warm up a little faster. And right there seems like a good warm spot. Get that back up to a boil, move it over to a cooler part of the stove, and I'll be back because there's one more ingredient that goes in this yet, and I'll show you that once we're ready for that step. My rice is about three fourths done. It's soaked up most of the liquid, and it's starting to get nice and fluffy and tender but it still needs another 15-20 minutes or so. And I mentioned there's one more ingredient to this. So, I'm going to get that underway. I got my pan all warmed up nice. In case you're wondering, this is a nice little number 7 national that I have. It's all warmed up. I'm going to give it a little bit. I don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit of clarified butter. And then, I'm going to brown up and crumble a half a pound. This is Jimmy Dean sage flavored sausage. You can use hamburger, ground pork, ground sausage. I got this on sale. It was cheap and it's sage flavored and it goes great with chicken. So this is what I'm going to use for that. Spread that around a little bit there and in the pan we go.
and I'm just going to chunk this up, crumble it, and get it browning. That'll take a couple of minutes. Once this is browned up and we're ready to add it to the rice, I'll come back and show you that. Alright, this is browned up nice, and even cooking it down to where it should render out the fat, there's not a whole lot of fat or grease in that, which is good up to a point. You don't want to make your stuffing greasy, but you do want a little bit of fat in there for the flavor. If there would have been excess grease in this, I would have added back maybe a spoonful or so to my stuffing. But as it is, there's not a whole lot in there, so that is pretty good to go. You see a little bit in the bottom there. Get all them nice bits. Set him aside, get that little piece off of there, and I'll stir this in. And like I said, this has got maybe 15 20 minutes or so left, probably less than that now. It's just about done, so I'll give it a few more minutes. Then I'll take it off the heat and uh, let it cool down a bit so I can handle it a little easier later on. And we're just about ready to start getting the chicken ready. My stuffing is all nice and ready to go, and so is my chicken. I'm gonna get this thing stuffed, get it on the spit, and then move over to the stove again, get everything set up, and start rotissering it. Rotissering? Whatever. Start spinning it on the spit. I got the chicken all patted dry, and I'm just going to start spooning in my stuffing. It's still fairly warm. It's not super hot, but it's still pretty warm. And we'll get that packed in there nice. Press it down a little bit. I don't want to use my spoon for that and touch raw chicken into my stuffing. We'll get that packed full nice. And then we'll have to truss this up. Kind of stitch the cavity shut and get everything sealed up so it doesn't fall apart while it's cooking over the fire. Uh, maybe one more spoonful. And I probably could have let this cool just a little bit more, make it a little bit easier to handle. Now the chicken should have a couple little flaps out here of skin, and this has still got the tail on it. Lay him down, that should all stay in there good. And let me get this set aside. I have some cotton butcher's twine. What I'm going to do is take a small sharp knife, that's an old worn out boning knife, it's got a real narrow blade and works nice for this sort of thing. If you have a big darning needle that works good for that, works good for it too. I'm just going to poke a little hole there and start threading my twine through that hole. Take the tip of my knife, hopefully push that through, there it comes and get some extra pulled through because I'll need that to tie up the legs. And just go back and forth, put a few stitches in it to hold the chicken together. I'm sure there's a lot faster and easier ways of stitching up a chicken and tying it down, but I don't do this very often, so You'll have to forgive me for not giving you the best possible tutorial on this sort of thing. What I'm going to do now is rub this down with some lemon pepper seasoning. I tried this before on some turkey. And it was really, really good. So I'll get this patted down. A little bit under his arms there. Flip it over and get the other side. Now, I'm going to spear this guy. 
I was meaning to grind a little better point on this, but I'll have to do that next time around. Hopefully I can do this without messing things up. Should come right out the front just like that. Get it back over. And I'm going to do this hopefully the smart way and make sure that it's holding down the back legs good. I got that through there. And I'll probably have to tie these wings down too, but I wanted to get it on the spit first and see how everything was going to work with that. Get that on there. Okay, that should work out pretty good. I'll throw a little bit of uh, twine around the front and we'll get this over onto the fire. Now I've shown this setup before when I did a little beef roast over my fire like this and when I'm done with the video I'll show you the entire thing again but this is part of a Farberware uh, electric broiler and I'm going to use the spit and the rotisserie and the motor and this is kind of the main piece of the thing but like I said I'll show you all that later but for right now we're going to get my chicken going. Got my chicken on the spit. Put that on there. And I got this little pan on here as kind of a counterweight because the weight of the motor kind of tips it a bit and it's better to keep it as level as I can. That slides on and then there we go. Get this plugged in. Turn it on, and away we go. I'm going to lower this down a little bit, I think. I'm not sure how long this will take. 45 minutes, maybe an hour. We'll see. It all depends on the internal temperature. You want to cook poultry to an internal temperature of 160 degrees to make sure that it's all the way done. But anyway, we got this going. Be sure you trim all your strings off so they're nice and short and this should go, go good once it uh, starts to brown just a little bit I'll start basting it and we'll come back for that I'm ready to start basting this now it's been cooking 10-15 minutes it's kind of dried off the uh, you know dampness on the outside but it's just starting to cook a little bit of the juice out so up in my warming oven up above here I've got some drawn butter Keep them nice and warm. And I'm just going to baste this up quick. Now, you'll see when I put this back together at the end of the video and show you the whole unit. When you're using it as an electric broiler, it does have one advantage in that it has a drip pan underneath. And after a couple of bastings with butter, once it starts cooking out some of the juice, you can just dip your brush right in the drip pan and get some of its own juices and baste it with that but it still works pretty good like this over the open fire. If you let it cook a little bit to where the skin is dried some, that'll help keep from washing off whatever seasonings you've rubbed into your into the skin of your meat when you start basting it. You'll still probably lose some, but that seems to really make a big difference. I got that dabbed over there nice. And uh, I'll put this down. I'll come back and I'll show you how I uh, run my fire a little better. Okay, I got the camera off the stand. You see, you know, there's a little bit of a blaze going down there. But what I do is when I get my wood ready, I have a bunch of little short chunks like this that I use just for this particular purpose. My longer wood is down here. And what I'll do is I'll feed short chunks into the back and let them burn down a bit. I want to keep most of my smoke and fire back here away from the open part of the, you know, where I have the eye off the stove and have it open. But I'll let them burn down a little bit and then I'll pull them forward so I have a nice coal down below the chicken itself. I don't want to have a lot of flame and smoke right underneath the chicken. I mean a little puff of smoke now and then is kind of nice for flavor. A little lick of flame doesn't hurt anything either. But I want to keep most of the smoke back here 
because I have to run my damper in the back pretty open so that it draws good and I don't end up smoking up my, my kitchen. But anyway, we'll let this go until it's done and then we'll come back. I'll baste it a few more times as we go along and once I come back I'll show you how this chicken turned out. Okay, I checked this and it's done. It's about 160 degrees in the deepest part of the meat so it's cooked through. Now, when I said earlier this take 45 minutes, maybe an hour, I was thinking in terms of baking it. Actually this took about three hours. I forgot how much slower this was. And there's something I entirely forgot and spaced out. I was going to inject it with butter before I put it on the fire. Completely forgot. Anyway, let's take this off and see how she turned out. Set that down. Forgot my hot pad because that's a bit warm being right over the stove. Take that off. Set him down on that. Cover my fire up and tip the camera down a bit here so you can see what's going on with this. There we go. Right straight down on it. Now, I'm going to clip my wires, wires, clip the strings, take them off. those out of the way. Take my spit off and should be able to push them right off. That's yeah, coming off nice. And that handle is still a little bit warmer than I can really hang on to right now. Set that aside and cut some more strings so that I can get in there and get my stuffing out. I had some stuffing left over in the pan but I ate most of that while I was waiting for this to get done. But clip my strings. Come on you. And there should be this one here. That knot. Yeah I'm on camera good. should be able to pull that string out. There we go. Now, let me throw these aside. If you like your skin a little bit crispier than what it came out on the stove, there's a way you can make it nice and crisp. Fire. careful application of a torch and that skin will be really crispy. And I forgot the computer over there making noises at me. Let's cut into this and see how it turned out. Get a nice little piece of breast meat here. Oh yeah, it's still nice and juicy. bit of stuffing out of the inside. Even if you don't make this chicken like this, I highly recommend that you make that stuffing. That is just amazing stuff. My grandma used to make that. Mom makes that. It's just wild rice, slivered almonds, mushrooms, and some kind of meat like, you know, ground pork sausage works great. Or even hamburger works really good. So let's try this out. A little bit of the stuffing. Mm. And that meat is nice and juicy. Really tender. Cuts real nice. And that lemon pepper gives it just a fantastic flavor. Gets a little bit of smoke from the fire. But not enough to really call it smoked. 
But cooking it over open coals, still got some skin in my mouth. But cooking it over open coals, an open fire like that, really gives it a fantastic flavor. That's how you make the chicken. I'm going to put my broiler back together, show you that before we go, and we'll wrap this video up. All right, just a quick little look at what this thing looks like all together. You saw me using this part and the motor and the spit on the wood stove, but actually this is an electric broiler. It's probably from the 1970s. It's a Farberware. The electric element and that little bar across underneath it, those just lift right out. For cleaning, you can put it in a dishwasher, I suppose. It has a rack. You could grill steaks or burgers on that. You know, it has the spit. You saw, saw me use that. It also has this rack with skewers on it for making shish kebabs. And this little dingus on the end would engage with the motor for the spit drive. And that'll turn the skewers for broiling shish kebabs. I'll have to try that one of these days. Now, like I said, this is probably from the 1970s. I got this at a second hand shop for 20 bucks. And I really like it. Even using it with just the electric element and roasting things or using it on the cook stove. I seen them on eBay pretty much complete for 60, 70, 80 dollars. You know, they're pretty nice, nice little unit, and you can certainly find one. I didn't see any of them that had the uh, shish kebab rack though on eBay, so that might not be very common. But at any rate, if you have a wood cook stove, you know, get one of these with the uh, spit and the motor, and you can really do some nice stuff with it. You can really do some nice stuff with, with it with the electric element. Like I said, it's a Farberware open hearth broiler, and uh, you can find them on eBay used. It's quite a nice little unit. Anyway, that's my video. I'll give you one more look at my chicken there. Now I'm going to go eat supper. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.